Mr. President, uh, I rise today to speak about the health care bill that is pending. Uh, the Department of Defense bill is also pending. It is the uh, business that we have on the floor today, and I have no doubt that at the appropriate time uh, there will be a vote in support of funding our troops, and I know that that may come um, on Saturday um, after the time for debate has run out. Um, but I'd like to talk about the health care issue because I think that uh, the reason that we have been here for uh, really most of the last month uh, and voting every Friday, every Saturday, every Sunday uh, is to to talk about the health care bill, debate the health care bill, assure that the American people know what is in this health care bill, and assure that people start looking at the effect it is going to have on their business and their families. Because I can't think of anything that we have ever voted on in this body since I have been here uh, that will affect people's lives in such a stark way. And I have I've tried to, uh, to look at what is good in the bill, and then I look at what I don't like in the bill, and I have to say that the scale is very heavily tilted toward what I don't like. In fact, I had a teletown hall meeting, which is uh, a new uh, capability that we have in the Senate now to talk to people, and it's a wonderful way to uh, be able to reach out uh, in your state uh, to have people who are interested in asking questions to actually call in and ask questions. And uh, at all times during the teletown hall that I had last night, there were over 6,000 people uh, that were in and out of that teletown hall. And I was very pleased because every single question was a real question. It was a real uh, person that uh, one man is on kidney dialysis uh, treatments and uh, of course he has very high drug costs and very high uh, expenses and and then you had people on Medicare uh, asking how uh, the cuts in Medicare would affect their treatment and their care and then you had small business people who are scared to death of having more burdens, more taxes, uh, more mandates on small business when they're almost screaming into the phone. But don't people realize how hard it is to make ends meet right now for small business? Don't, don't you all uh, realize that uh, we are trying to stay afloat while we are in one of the worst recessions of our lifetimes? And of course, I assured them that I do understand that. That's why I am uh, trying to amend this bill, trying to change it, uh, trying to encourage my colleagues on the other side of the aisle uh, that we really should start over, that we should start over and try to have a health care reform bill that does three basic things. We want a health care reform bill that actually lowers the cost of health care. Right now, the bill before us will increase the cost of health care. The, the cost of the bill that is before us today, if you start when the bill takes effect, which is 2014, and you go 10 years out, you're looking at $2.5 trillion in costs. We have a debt of $12 trillion in America right now. Those numbers are staggering. We used to be worried about 12 billion, 15 billion, 100 billion. We're talking about a trillion. We're talking about 12 trillion dollars in debt right now. And the idea that we would put 2.5 trillion more in this health care bill with mandates and taxes to offset some of it uh, on businesses and em employers and families is unthinkable. It is unthinkable in good times, but in bad times as we have now, it's just unthinkable. So here we are now talking about uh, this bill that will increase the debt and increase the mandates. And the people of Texas, I, I did a little poll on the Teletown Hall, and I just said, register in, punch 
one for yes on your phone, punch two for no, and three for undecided. And I ask, how do you stand on the bill that is before us today? If you say yes, press one. No, press two. And 81% instantly started registering against this bill. And uh, I was listening to my colleague, Senator Barrasso of Wyoming, and he had had the same teletown hall. Uh, many senators are doing this now in Wyoming, and he had had a couple of thousand people from Wyoming on the call, and it was 93% that registered on the poll against this bill. Nebraska, my colleague from Nebraska, uh, Senator Johans, said that the polls in Nebraska are overwhelming against this bill. People who are listening to the debate, reading the newspapers, getting every bit of information they can, listening to the Teletown Hall conference calls and asking their questions, are registering in unprecedented numbers the interest in this bill and the overwhelming rejection of this bill. So I talk about uh, what's in the bill that's before us and then what we could have. Instead of $100 billion of new taxes that would start next month, we could step back and say, we're not going to put new taxes on business and families and companies before the bill even takes effect. In fact, Senator Thune and I had an amendment that was rejected yesterday on the floor. It was tabled yesterday afternoon. Uh, and it would have done exactly that, very simply. If the bill is going to pass, at least don't start the taxes until there is some program available that is the result of this bill. Very simple, very clear. That was our amendment, and it was tabled. 41 senators said yes, and uh, we lost the motion. So it is a great concern to us that the tax cuts, uh, that the tax increases are in this bill, and that they start next month, that we will have $100 billion in new taxes starting next month, that the 40% excise tax on premium health care coverage policies takes effect in 2013, but the bill doesn't take effect until 2014. So that's the bill that we're debating today that the overwhelming number of American people are rejecting. And they're rejecting it because they don't want taxes, they don't want mandates, and they don't want the government to step between themselves and their doctors. They want the physician-patient relationship that is the hallmark of American health care. It's what makes us different from most other countries in the world, that we don't have government standing in the way in most of our private plans and saying, no, no, you can't have this treatment because you're too old or you're not fit enough. Having government say, here is who is qualified for this procedure is not the health care that we have known in America. So we are for health care reform that lowers the cost of health care in our country so more people will have affordable options. Now, there's a part of this bill that could provide that. It doesn't mean a government takeover. We don't need a government takeover. That's why you have all the taxes and mandates, because it's going to cost so much that taxes and mandates are the way that the majority is putting forward to pay for this expensive government takeover. Why not have the health care exchange without all the mandates? so that there would be a free market on the exchange with no cost that would allow people to have choices, that the insurance companies would come forward and there would be high deductible plans for people who wanted high deductible plans, low deductible plans that would be more expensive, but some people would prefer to have that. You could make your choices among the plans that would be put on an exchange that would be open, transparent, and competitive, and you would have bigger risk pools and therefore lower premiums would be the result. How about in addition to that, which would not require a big government takeover, therefore no cost, 
Senator, time has expired. Uh, I would like to ask unanimous consent to have five more minutes. Is there objection? I have to go to Intel. Oh, um, okay. Two more. Could I have unanimous consent to have two more minutes? Thank you. Is there objection? Without objection, sir. So let me just say, talking about what Republicans would like to see in health care reform and asking the majority if we could stop going through uh, every weekend with one vote on Friday, one vote on Saturday, one vote on Sunday, so that we are not able to do anything with our families during this holiday season. Instead, why don't we step back and say, we'll come back after Christmas or uh, whenever the majority would like to come back and just say, let's sit down in a bipartisan way and let's have three principles in a health care reform bill. Number one, we would lower the cost with an exchange, bigger risk pools, lower cost. Number two, how about tax credits for every individual or family that would buy their own policies because they don't have access through an employer? Or if they're going to go on this exchange that would not cost anything, uh, they would be able to have a tax credit to buy their own health care coverage. That would increase the number of people insured in our country much larger than what we're looking at today with a big government-run plan, which is said to only increase the number of insured 11 million. Well, I think we could get 11 million with the free market working. And number three, what about medical malpractice reform? We could take $100 billion out of the cost of health care by just having frivolous lawsuits curbed with some kind of reasonable limits on damages or attorney's fees that would allow people to get a, uh, some compensation for a transgression, but not something that is going to raise the cost of premiums so high for doctors and hospitals that they have to charge more and that rises, uh, raises the cost of health care across the board. Those would be the principles, Mr. President, that we could support. Let's start again. Senator, time has expired. After the Christmas time and do a rational proposal that the American people would accept. Thank you, Mr. President, and I yield the floor. 